Welcome to another edition of CHP Talks. We are here today for a special edition. We're going to be talking a little bit about the history of CHP with a long-time CHP member, very involved in many levels of the party, David Reimer. And so hope that you'll uh, stay tuned and enjoy this little lesson and walk through the history of CHP with David Reimer. So Rod, why don't you introduce our special guest for today? Well, David uh, really is a special guest, and uh, uh, we, we go back a long ways. Uh, David Reimer, I'm going to uh, tell people a little bit about you. Uh, you were introduced to the CHP in 1987 while serving as an associate pastor in Wetaskiwin, Alberta. You became a member immediately and were nominated to be the candidate for the CHP in the Wetaskiwin Electoral District in 1988. That goes back a few years. That's right. uh, David was appointed chairman for the convention held uh, in 1989 in Edmonton, also served as convention chair in Winnipeg and co-chair in Gatineau uh, in Quebec. David moved back to Manitoba in 1991 and became the founding pastor of Shalom Family Worship Center in Steinbeck, Manitoba. Uh, David has served in several positions um, uh, within the CHP over 30 years, uh, including deputy leader, Manitoba president, prayer and ethics and personnel director, that's what we call our PEP director, and interim leader in 2014. <clears throat> David ran as a candidate eight times, in, uh, two times in Alberta, six times in Manitoba, and more recently served as a campaign manager for two Winnipeg candidates. David is still active at the Manitoba council level. And... Uh, now, David is involved in um, ministry involvement in International Christian Embassy Jerusalem as the Manitoba representative. David and Katie have three adult married children, five beautiful, healthy grandchildren, and uh, 53 years of marriage. They have been foster parents to 45 children, still offer care to three female adults. Uh, David, uh, it, it's a pleasure. I, I will just think of the time we spent uh, traveling around together in 2014. Yes. Where we got to know each other quite well during that time. So welcome to CHP Talks. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Rod. It's great to be with you and Peter today on CHP Talks, and I look forward to our time together. So let's start with going way back to the beginning of your involvement. Um, CHP started maybe a little bit earlier than that. And if you even want to talk about some of those earlier arrangements that uh, made CHP uh, get started in the first place, um, you're, you're a historian within the party and uh, we'd love to hear your, your recollections and knowledge. Who would have ever thought that back in 1987 and now 34 years ago, that I would be one of the historians of the party. I never thought about that at the beginning, let me tell you. But it was um, when I first heard about the Christian Heritage Party uh, back in Wetaskiwin in 1987, um, I didn't understand or realize the scope of what I would be getting into at that time. And not that I would have uh, steered away from the challenge, but just that at the time I was more focused specifically on being a member of a political party where the foundation was based on the Bible and having been a conservative before that, looking at the CHP and what we had to offer the country, the hope and the promise that we had to offer the country is what really intrigued me and captivated my attention. So when I first became a member, um, I didn't realize or didn't think specifically about being a candidate immediately. However, the more involved I got with the party at the local level, I realized that with an impending election coming up in 1988, that uh, they were looking for a candidate for the Wetaskiwin riding. So uh, called riding back then, now it's electoral district, of course. So I uh, put my name forward as a possible nominee and we had a nomination, and I won the nomination for Wetaskiwin, and uh, it all launched from there. Um, we did very well. I resigned my position as an associate pastor uh, based on uh, ethics or principles where I did not want to in any way uh, tie 
my church involvement to my political career. So uh, although it was difficult and many people did not understand at the time why I would do that, it was a matter of principle. Um, so I resigned my position, a paid position in the church, obviously, and uh, began my campaigning for several months prior to the election. During that time, made many, many wonderful relationships and friendships that I still embrace even today, which is remarkable. But um, during that campaign, my eyes were open to a number of things. The, the climate of the country at the time, uh, going door to door and, and traveling thousands of kilometers within the riding during that time. And um, uh, it became very apparent to me that the Christian Heritage Party was exactly what our country needed and still needs even to this day. So I cherish my membership in the CHP dating back to 1987. And I wanna encourage any viewer today that if your membership is ready to lapse, you might wanna consider renewing it right now, it would be a good time to do it. But back, back then, as I was running, I realized that um, many people were, were considering what was happening politically in the country. Uh, at that time, it was the free trade election with Brian Mulroney as the prime minister. And many people were becoming disillusioned. If you remember back then, the Reform Party also emerged at the same time that the Christian Heritage Party began in 1986. And they ran on a platform of the West wants in and the North wants in and the Triple E Senate. Well, they were appealing to the protest movements, uh, so to speak, and talking about kind of a, a separation or the or making people aware of the fact that the West felt alienated from the rest of Canada. So that's where we emerged as kind of a unifying influence, even in, in the midst of the Reform Party talking about the divisions in Canada, we were talking about how to unite and restore hope in our nation. So that's something that was really exciting to me at the time. We did very well. Uh, outside of Ontario, uh, I was the one that had the highest number of votes of any CHP candidate. Uh, Charles Cavilla in Lethbridge was next to me. And then I think Ron Gray was after Charles in numbers of votes received during that first election. So it was an exciting time. And uh, I've got many great memories, too many to recount in the short time we have available on this CHP Talks today. But from there, uh, it kind of springboarded me into a greater level of involvement with the Christian Heritage Party. And I was uh, immediately uh, approached by the executive, by the national board at that time, whether I would be willing to be the campaign chair for the second convention of the Christian Heritage Party. And this one being held in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, with the close proximity of Wetaskiwin to Edmonton, I immediately uh, volunteered or put my name forward to do that. And it was another great experience. I got to know the hotel uh, staff and also the convention center staff in Edmonton and worked together with them closely, developing a great friendship and relationship. Had a wonderful opportunity to explain what the CHP was all about and for them to see that there was a party that actually uh, lived by their uh, principles and that, they could, that we could be trusted in our negotiations, in our relationships. And as a result of the convention, it was a huge convention. And one of the highlights of the convention, by the way, was that at the gala evening, uh, it was announced that the Berlin Wall had come down, which was huge. That was in 1989. And uh, in November, that was a huge announcement that was made to the applause, standing ovation of all the delegates that were there present at the time. But as a result of um, that experience, and I also ended up hosting another convention for our church denomination back then. And those two conventions together, bringing uh, hundreds and hundreds of people to Edmonton, uh, caused me to win um, the 
Ambassador of the Year Award from the city of Edmonton, which was another huge uh, achievement and something that I treasure even to this day. It was very exciting. What a different country we would have today if our candidates would have been elected in 1988, our first uh, draft of uh, candidates. Yeah, um, you know, and, and certainly if, if people would vote, would have voted uh, for what they really wanted back then, instead of uh, voting for who they thought could win and the lesser of two evils, uh, our country would, would be in a different place today. Uh, as a result, because we have some great candidates back then. We have some great candidates today. But uh, David, uh, thank you for being one of the founders uh, and one of the pioneers of the party way back in 87. Well, let's talk about a couple more pioneers. You mentioned a couple, you read, mentioned a few names already, but um, who was leader in, uh, in that first election, 1988? Well, all the way back to 1986, actually, Ed Van Woodenberg was our first leader, and uh, he was one of the founding fathers of the Christian Heritage Party. And I got to meet him, actually, only uh, prior, just prior to the convention. And uh, over the years, I can uh, remember uh, in Alberta uh, driving him around to many of the different, well, actually, uh, all the way from south, uh, southeastern B.C., all the way through Alberta, taking him around to many different electoral districts and me meeting the associations and their executives, uh, both prior to the convention and following the convention. So it's been my great privilege and distinct honor to have been able to connect with Ed Van Woodenberg, our leader at that time uh, on a personal level. We drove many thousands of kilometers together in the vehicle being able to talk and discuss different things. And as he spoke at different uh, events, uh, I was able to um, not necessarily critique him, but to expand upon some of the things that he enlarge upon some of the things that he had spoken about. And it was so exciting to uh, hear his heart and passion for the party and for the country. It was absolutely incredible. Those are memories that I will always cherish as well. And then from there, I moved back to Manitoba in 1991 and continued my involvement with the Christian Heritage Party. At that time, there was things that happened. I mentioned Charles Cavilla's name earlier, and he uh, became the, uh, the leader of the party for a season as well. And uh, there were some uh, personal issues and some things that happened during the course of that time. And of course, we went through a time of transition with Heather Stilwell being the leader for a season, and then Jean Blackier. And uh, during that whole time, I was involved, but uh, at a different level. When I became the Prayer Ethics and Personnel Director, uh, one of the things that I was tasked with doing, uh, with Ron Gray as the leader now, um, I was tasked with trying to heal some of the wounds that were there, some of the uh, feelings that may have been frayed as a result of misunderstanding or comments or sentiments that had been expressed that maybe were not, um, not Christian and, and not proper at the time. Uh, sometimes it's just a miscommunication. And if you're not talking person to person with someone, there's sometimes things that, are, that fall through the cracks. And so one of my jobs as a prayer ethics and personnel director was to try and heal some of those wounds. And we made, Ron Gray and I made several visits to uh, members of the CHP that had either resigned or left with some hurt or hard feelings. And we were able to restore that to a large extent. And I'm extremely grateful to God for the healing power and for the, the, um, the Holy Spirit bringing things together and uh, restoring of fragmented relationships. I'm so thankful for that. That's one of the lasting legacies of my involvement uh, as the uh, PEP director. Now, one of the things I've noted uh, recently, David, um, you know, the Reform Party is gone, the Alliance Party is gone, the United Alternative is gone, the Christian Heritage Party is still here after 35 years. And uh, 
you know, our, our voice is needed now more than ever, I think, in terms of calling our nation back to a biblical worldview, back to a, a moral worldview. And, uh, you know, there's, there's been all, sometimes people have left because they think that uh, other parties have a, a greater likelihood of success or whatever, but uh, it's, it's uh, this foundation that was wisely laid by our original founders and leaders, Ed Van Woodenberg, Gerhard Herwig, and the Stillwells, uh, and others, Arnie Bryan, uh, certainly has continued to this day. And it was uh, a, a presentation by Ed Van Woodenberg in the town of Smithers, close to where we live today and where we did live in 1987, that my wife, Elaine, uh, heard Ed Van Woodenberg uh, talking about the party and that inspired her to uh, take the Greyhound bus down to Hamilton, Ontario for the founding convention. And, and that was the beginning of our involvement. So Ed uh, not only uh, wrote and spoke about, you know, the vision for the party, uh, he was a great ambassador and uh, thanks for driving him around. Uh, you, right. you and I drove around quite a bit in the summer of 2014 together, put on a couple thousand kilometers together and uh, it's, it's a great way to get to know, uh, know one another, but also to share in presenting the word, uh, you know, to folks who have not heard about CHP and to encourage those who have been working in the trenches and maybe sometimes become discouraged because they see our country going downhill. But anyway, thanks for your long uh, track record of working with the party. My, uh, my own involvement with uh, CHP led me to also meet Edwin Woodenberg at a couple of conventions and then a few national board meetings, actually, where he was serving uh, as a BC president. Um, those are some of my, my first couple of national board meetings. And uh, he was their founding leader. And, uh, and David Reimer was there as our PEP director at the time and Manitoba president. And, um, and also... Um, um, Ron Gray was leader at the time, our longest serving leader, and, uh, and Jim Natchik was also at that meeting, and he was leader after, um, after Ron Gray, um, served for a number of years, um, and has since actually passed on into glory, though he was one of the younger leaders of the party. Um, what may have seemed before his time, he seemed very strong and healthy, and yet he was called home just a few years ago, and, uh, and, and so after him, um, David Reimer, who's on our call here today, was interim leader for some months um, before Rod became leader. And so that is, that's the succession of leaders to this um, point in the history of the party. And, uh, and all of us also have something else in common in that each of us has served as deputy leader, uh, Rod under Jim Natchek and, uh, and David Reimer under Ron Gray and briefly under Jim Natchek. And then, um, and myself with David Reimer, and then up until recently with Rod Taylor. So we've all we've all served in that role, and it's an interesting um, thing that we have in common on this call today. Um, but uh, um, I, I think we should we should wrap up soon. But what um, I. We, you mentioned some trials and, and CHP has obviously had trials and difficulties. It hasn't been smooth sailing through all these years, but, but Rod mentioned that um, other parties have, have gone and have, have been, uh, you know, are no longer registered. They're on the, maybe on the long list of elections, Canada that, you know, parties that no longer exist. Um, but, uh, but CHP is still here. And, and what does, I guess, what does that tell us about the future and um, about what we should be learning from all of this and what maybe new members who didn't know any of this prior to listening to this CHP talks um, could take away from, from our talk here today? Well, one of the things yeah. that comes to my mind is um, a biblical analogy, and that is if you're party or a foundation, then it will stand when the storms come. The reality is many, most or all political parties are built on sand. And when the storms come, what happens is things fall apart. And even if the party retains its name or whatever, 
they change leadership, many people defect, many, there's many hard feelings and it gets publicized in the national media. But for us as a political party, even though we've had difficulties, even though we've had challenges and adversity has come, we face that adversity with the biblical principles that are solid. So our foundation was laid on a, sol on a solid base. And the reality is that when the storms have come, we've been able to address them with biblical principles and doing it the Bible way. And we've been able to withstand the storm and be able to move on. Yes, we've all served as deputy leaders in the past. And uh, I can remember when I took over from Jim Natchik uh, in February of 2014, one of my first and initial uh, decisions or actions was to appoint you, Peter, as my deputy leader. Uh, that's one of the uh, achievements, one of the primary achievements I would consider for the 10 months that I was the interim leader. And I saw in you, Peter, uh, a man with uh, great potential and a man with great character, uh, one, a young person that could carry the torch of the CHP to the next level. And um, I know that the decision was definitely the right decision at that time. And I know that because Rod, when he became leader, he chose you also to remain on as his deputy leader, showing the continuation and the consistency and the solidarity that we have as a political party as we continue to grow and move forward into the next generation. Yeah, um, and very good. And, and uh, you know, uh, David, you mentioned like that other parties, even if they still have the name, like the Conservative Party, for instance, still has the name. They still have uh, a lot of me they have members of parliament. They have loyal supporters, but uh, their core values have continued. You know, the sand, uh, as you mentioned, the, the foundation of sand rather than built on the rock <laughs> uh, uh, continues to um, dwindle away or to be washed away. So they've given up commitment to traditional marriage. They've given up commitment to uh, uh, the pro-life protection of innocent human life. Uh, they've, you know, refused uh, for several years to even put the supremacy of God and the rule of law into their uh, policy book. Um, like they don't want to identify with the word God, you know, and there are, of course, individual members, some tremendous individual members who are in that party. And I, I don't take a thing away from them, but, but the party itself is not what the founding members thought it would be. They thought it would be a bulwark uh, against socialism, against moral decay. But in this compromise has, has cost them something. And right now they're, they're a shell of their former selves. And I think in the upcoming election, we we expect that even the voting results are going to uh, be a, a disappointment to those who have thought that the Conservative Party is still going to, you know, bring the country back. Um, uh, I think they're going to find uh, very disappointing even voting results because people can see through uh, the the facade of something that uh, is not no longer built on a rock as as the Christian Heritage Party is so. Great to point that out. And yeah, all of us have, have known the pleasure of uh, serving uh, as deputy leader. That's, that's tremendous. We have a new deputy leader today who's not with us as, as Peter is taking up new responsibilities. But it's great to have the three of us here together today uh, to talk about you know where, where the party has come from, uh, where we are today, and where we're going in the future. So uh, that's great to point that out. Peter, did you have a, a follow-up there that you wanted to uh, make sure we get uh, cover before we close off for the day? Well, you, you mentioned a couple of, of points about the, the Conservative Party there. And, um, you know, that's that's actually one of the, you know, we're seeing history sort of um, continue and, and maybe repeat itself in some ways. Um as, as David mentioned earlier, there's this Western alienation um, back in 88. Um, we're, we're seeing that again. Um, back then it was under Mulroney. Now it's under a liberal government. Um, 
you know, there's um, some of these tensions, they, they, they go, but they often seem to come back um, because the, the parties in power, the, specifically the, the Liberals most of the time and the Conservatives some of the time, <clears throat> they, they don't um, have much in the way of principle except to find a way to get back into power when they're not and to do whatever it takes to stay in power when they are. Um, that's, that's really their, their guiding um, light. Um, and so we see them change their views over time on, on many issues. Um, and we'll even, if you're, if you're careful and you watch, you'll even see, um, you know, columnists and, and reporters point this out who are, have no specific um, basis in principle, except to say, they're called conservative. What are they trying to conserve? They've, they aren't trying to conserve that anymore. They've given that up. They're not trying to conserve, you know, as some of the issues that you've mentioned, even some economic issues, um, you know, even, even balanced budgets and things like that, um, that used to be, you know, their bread and butter. And now they they don't even talk about those things necessarily anymore. And so um, they, they will be, sometimes they're, they're cynical, um, sometimes like they're, they're probably liberal, but they're asking an honest question of what, what are the conservatives trying to conserve? And, um, you know, as you said, thankfully, there are some specific members of parliament who haven't lost their own sight of that, but as a, the party as a whole and the majority of their MPs are, are not taking that principled stand. Um, and David, I'm sure you've got, uh, some examples of this, but, um, um, but looking back at, at election campaigns that you've been part of, because you've run, you know, quite a number of times, you know, were there specific, uh, is there a specific election campaign? You've talked about 88, but any of the ones um, um, since then that have really stood out in your mind and maybe um, would serve um, as, a, as a good um, uh, point to keep in mind moving forward? Well, ha yes, having run eight times, I've got a treasure trove of memories of every single one of the election campaigns. Uh, more recently, I guess I would say that when I was the interim leader, I ran a McLeod riding in Southern Alberta. And that was an eye-opening experience as well for me. I had uh, the assistance, we had a national board meeting held in uh, Coaldale actually during that time. And so a number of the national board members were able to assist me for a few days, at least during my campaign there. I've got many great memories of that campaign. And one of the highlights actually is that we, although we came in fourth, uh, we beat the NDP in that riding. So that was uh, kind of a, a highlight. I met uh, many wonderful people during that time, both uh, CHP members, and again, I'd like to encourage people viewing to check on your membership uh, dates to make sure that your memberships are renewed and, and actually plan to come to the convention uh, in September, uh, September 13 to 16 in Calgary. I'd like to see you there. My wife and I are planning to be there as delegates, and, and we would love to connect with you at that time. You could say you saw me on the CHP talks, and although you can't date back to uh, 1987, you, uh, whenever you did become a member, come to the convention and we'll uh, share our thoughts and expand on this CHP Talks today. But um, uh, many highlights. What I noticed from 1988 until the most recent time I ran was in 2015. That was 2014 in McLeod, but then I hustled back to Manitoba and immediately threw my hat in the ring to run in Kildonan, and St. Paul in 2015. And uh, from that particular campaign, I can recall uh, knocking on my team and I uh, called on 16,000 homes. Now, not all the people were home at the time when we knocked on their door, but we actually contacted 16,000 homes. And from 1988 till 2015, this is what I can say, there has been a profound decline, sad to say, in the morality of our nation. And it's been um, heartbreaking on one hand, 
but challenging from another perspective as a Christian that we have a great job and a challenge ahead of us. We cannot shirk our responsibility. We need to be there uh, at the forefront politically, even if we don't have members elected, there's roles that we can play. And I'm sure that you've covered in previous CHP talks, uh, some of the things, some of the successes that we've had without having been actually elected. So uh, for us to be able to put forward that there is one political party that stands on principles, has moral values, and recognizes the supremacy of God clause in the preamble to our constitution, that we are the political party that believes in the supremacy of God, the God of the Bible, and then to go from there. Some people don't want to engage in conversation at the door, but there are others, perhaps one in 10 or so, that would like to find out more about what we stand for besides what's on the brochure, when we're there handing a brochure and shaking their hand. And it recently that hasn't been, been possible with COVID, but hopefully by the time the next election is called, we'll be able to uh, engage personally door to door with people again. But they need to see that there is a party that actually has hope and a promise for this nation. God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, or a, a future with hope. And that's uh, an underlying principle that we can stand on and march forward on. Oh, well, good. thank you for that. I think that's probably a great place to wrap this up uh, with, with God's word and God's promise. And... Uh, so thank you again, David, for your um, historical insights and your encouragement. And I hope that all candidates who are listening will be inspired by that uh, stupendous feat of door knocking um, to go out and knock, even if it's a, uh, even if it's a tenth of, of that in a campaign, um, it will be a good start. Um, but uh, but set your sights high and uh, yes. and and talk to our fellow Canadians. Uh, as you said, the decline in our country is evident. There is unfortunately far more um, strident opposition than there probably was um, in 88, although there was opposition back then, I'm sure as well. Um, but um, we, we have to be prepared and we have to um, um, ourselves, each of us, be on a solid foundation to be able to face the, um, the adversity and the challenges that we, that we face in our country as it, uh, as you say, um, has departed so much from its, its Christian roots. Yeah. So thank you, David, very much for your service to the country, your service to CHP, your friendship, uh, your, your uh, diligent work in organizing conventions, and we look forward to seeing you at the convention September 13 to 16 in Calgary. That's going to be an exciting time. Uh, we, we don't know. We may have gone through another, yet another election before then. Uh, there's, the future is uh, unknown to us exactly, but we are doing our best to be ready and to have our candidates ready uh, to face that and to present the truth of uh, biblical morality and the opportunity to, uh, for this country to, to vote for life, family, and freedom in 2021. So anyway, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. It's been a real uh, pleasure to review some of these memories that we have together. Yes. God bless you. Bless you. Take care.